I've actually made a pretty significant change to the theater room, but if you're just looking at it, you wouldn't tell. In fact, you wouldn't notice a difference until I push this button right here. This is the VividStorm S Pro, and it's a floor rising projector screen. That's not only cool, but it actually makes the picture quality of my projector significantly better as well. Now for the astute eye, you're gonna notice I actually have two projection screens in here. I have the white screen in the background, and of course this VividStorm screen, which is a little bit darker color. And that's because the VividStorm is actually considered a high contrast screen. Uh, with a lot of these newer style projectors, especially like the one I have on the ground right here, this is the Ultimia Thor T60, they have a lot greater lumen output and because of that, it can be really hard to reproduce those deeper, darker black. And so on something like a traditional white screen, we can actually get a very washed out image where this particular screen can actually fight that and give you a much higher contrast ratio. If you take a look at the same image being displayed on both of these screens, you're going to notice that the image quality on the VividStorm is significantly better. In fact, I actually tested the contrast ratio and I actually got about a 30% higher contrast ratio from the VividStorm than I did the traditional white screen. And it just really goes to show you that picking the right screen for your projector is really important. And so that's why when we're looking at these images next to each other, you're gonna notice that the white image is a lot grayer and washed out of an image where the VividStorm actually has a much higher contrast ratio. You're gonna see a lot deeper, darker blacks on the VividStorm and yet it still maintains a very bright white. I was actually very impressed with this. Now I didn't expect to see and or measure as big of a difference as I did off the traditional projection screen versus uh, this vivid storm screen at least not in the dark i was really surprised by that the vivid storm screen is equipped with ambient light rejection technology which allows you to use it with your lights on you're going to notice that the traditional theater screen absolutely did lose a lot of that color and the picture is starting to get very washed out now on the vivid storm not so much in fact in person there's really a negligible difference in this theater room. I was actually really surprised. In fact, I would say it would be hard pressed for most people to even notice a difference. Now, the camera unfortunately picks up the light a little bit more than what's actually going on in real life. So I want to reiterate that in my theater room, there really was no difference at all with the lights on or off. Now, it is important to note though, my theater room is a completely light controlled room and the bulbs in here are not very bright because it is a home theater setting. In fact, there's only two light bulbs in the entire theater. So keep that in mind. I did want to go ahead and move this down into my living room. Now, my living room is basically a huge sunroom. We have nine foot ceilings with huge windows on both sides of it. And of course, no houses and no trees nearby. It basically gets full sunlight all the time. In fact, we rarely, if ever, use our lights throughout the day. So this is what I would consider probably the worst possible place anyone could put a projector. And I never thought it would be possible to even have a projector in this style of room. And yet, this did actually a really good job still rejecting the light. Now, the blacks did get grayed out, and it's not perfect. It's obviously better with the lights off but it does a really great job, and that's because of the ambient light rejecting technology. This type of screen is called a lenticular screen, and that's because it has thousands of horizontal lines going across the screen itself. And if we were to zoom in on those lines, what we would see is this sawtooth-like structure. Now, the way that this works is that it has a ledge, and any light coming from above will be rejected, and that's based off of that design. Now, you might be wondering, well, why, if I have my lights on, does some of the light not get rejected? And that's because the way that this screen works is it's designed for an ultra short throw projector. So if you take a look at that sawtooth structure again, you'll notice that any light being directed below it will be pointed back to the viewer. And that's because that's where the ultra short throw projector sits. 
and unfortunately, not all of our lights come directly from above. Some of them come from the sides, and some of them come from the bottom or from the floor. It's because light is reflected and it reflects off of other surfaces. And so that's the light that you see on the screen. This is a really cool technology and it's allowing us to be able to use these projectors and get much bigger screens in our living rooms that we never thought was gonna be possible before. So I tell you that to make sure that you understand the expectations of what the screen can and can't do. In all reality though, when I was watching this in the living room, I could watch uh, TV shows just fine. Uh, bright movies, things of that nature. But when I started watching more darker content, it was a little washed out with the blacks being more of a gray. Having said that, I never thought it would be possible to watch a projector in that room, period. So for that, I was very impressed. Now, not everyone has an ultra short throw projector like this, but they might want an ambient light rejecting screen. No worries, VividStorm sells a bunch of different types of screens. They sell some fixed frame frames and they sell even more of these rising screens and even some that come from down from the ceiling. Now, I'm a huge fan of these types of motorized screens because the possibilities of what you can do are pretty endless. You can build it into a stand where it's hidden and no one ever sees your television until you want them to or until you want the cinematic experience. I love that idea because it allows you to design your room how you want to and not necessarily around your television, which is really what a lot of people are doing right now. Now, if you do decide to hide the screen in like a stand or in the ceiling or something of that nature, you're gonna need to control it. And there's a couple different ways that you can control it. First is just by hitting the switch on the side of it. It does have an up, down and a stop switch so that you can manually do that if you ever lose your remote control. However, you don't have to manually use it. In fact, I don't know that I've really ever manually used it except a couple times when I was just sitting here setting it up. Most of the time you're gonna be using a remote control. And they do have two remote controls that come with this. It comes with a white remote control, which is actually an RF remote control. It uses radio frequency. And that means that you can point this remote control anywhere you want and it will just work. It does have an up button, a stop button, and a down button. Now, it also comes with a black remote control. Now, this black remote control is an IR remote control, or infrared. Now, this is just like your television remote control or your AV receiver remote control, where you have to actually point it at the unit for it to register. Now, a lot of people are wondering, well, why would it come with an IR remote control? If you have something like a sofa baton or a control center that uses uh, infrared technology, that's really what this is for. In fact, uh, I have a sofa baton remote control and I can actually run it with the IR remote control so that when I turn on all my stuff, I press a button, it'll actually turn the projector on and turn the screen on to make it go up and down. Now, I know that it can be easy to misplace a remote control. One of the things that VividStorm thought of is they actually comes with uh, this holder that you can screw into the wall or put it into a table or whatever. And that way you can always place it there and you won't hopefully lose it. Now there's one other thing that came in the box that I thought was pretty intriguing and a really cool idea. It's this little USB adapter. Now this USB adapter plugs into the back of a projector. Now assuming your projector supports this, when you turn on the projector, it will actually raise the screen up. And when you turn off the projector, the screen will lower by itself. So it becomes a communication device between the projector and the screen. And it's actually really cool technology. I really love that they're adding that. I honestly have a dilemma now that I've reviewed this VividStorm screen and this Ultimia Ultra Short Throw Projector. I just built this theater room. Uh, I just put falls wall up you can see it's not even finished yet now that i've seen this projector on this screen and what this is capable of i'm seriously considering tearing all this down and creating a custom cabinet just for the screen and the projector and the center channel speaker what do you guys think i should do and let me know what you would do if you had this in your setup all right guys this is toyd's di audio i'm out